It's time for our third and final sound strategy, one-shot audio. These are sound effects you want to be played once and at a specific time. This can be the sound of a button being pressed, a box breaking, a door creaking open, or any other in-the-moment sound effects that you want to be well, you, that you want to have triggered. And this is why they're a little bit trickier than the other, well, the first two sound types, because they have to be triggered through logic, meaning that there's going to be some code involved. So let's take a look at what might be kind of a simpler example. And in the next video, I'll show you another way where we can make this a little bit more advanced. So right here, we have this button that's attached to the wall. And on this button, we have this button trigger. And you'll see that what this is supposed to do is that once it's touched in game, it makes the wall close. Let's get to the spot. Boing and boing, boing, jump up, boing. Nice. And watch, as soon as I, I'm not going to do anything other than touch it. And it plays this door close audio once it's triggered. So how does this trigger occur? Well, something that we need to learn a bit about if we don't know already is in Unity, we have these regions called colliders. By definition, colliders process collisions. Sometimes colliders, like on this wall here, have a collider that makes it so you can't walk through it. The collider actually prevents you from going through them. The walls and the floors all have these colliders that prevent you from moving through them. Same with this moving wall. However, this button, if you see this kind of green outline, actually has a collider attached to it that's invisible. It's kind of like a force field. It's an empty space that if my character goes into it, will actually kind of respond. It's a little bit like you never walked outside and you have those lights that flick on as you walk past, motion detector lights. It's kind of like that, where once you're in the region it's looking at, it triggers a response. So think of this as like a motion detector. As soon as it detects my character moving in it, it triggers a response. And the coder that made this project already built that box collider and ticked off this thing that says is triggered. This needs to be turned on. Quick side note, these colliders, if you click on this little box beside it, we can actually edit them and make them larger in case you wanted it to be triggered sooner or later. The size of the trigger can be uh, adjusted later on. And with this trigger on it, there's something available called the move down script that was created by this coder. I'm going to pop it open here and show you what this says. In the code that pops up, there's going to be a lot of information that if you're not familiar with code, it's going to look a little bit cryptic. But what we're, what we're looking for is a particular term called if. An if statement means the same thing as it does in the real world. I say, if I tell you to sit down, you should sit down. If I uh, sneeze, well, you better watch out. <laughs> so if something happens, there's usually a response that follows it. And in our code, if statements are the things that trigger responses. In this case, if my wall is moving down and it's moved past a certain point and it's active, I'm going to let it continue to move down. And there's some more, some smaller, uh, kind of more uh, easier and more difficult logic in these places. But what we want to be looking for is places where we can trigger our audio in response to things. And sometimes this is going to be a little bit harder than others to determine. On trigger enter is a part of the code that gets en enabled if I move into a trigger region. Remember this box collider I told you about where if I step into this zone, it triggers a response. That's this part of the code on trigger enter. And inside of it, I'm looking to see if it's the player that's entered it. Just in case there's other things moving around my scene, maybe there's a ball I can hit. I don't want that ball to trigger it necessarily. In this case, I just want it to be the player. And so inside of this, if the player is what triggers it, this part of the code here is what's responsible for the wall starting to move. Move down equals true. Active movement equals true. Move up equals false because it's moving down. This is how, where the wall starts to move. And so here is where I actually began to play my wall moving sound. I don't want it to play any other time, except if it goes back up. Move up is true. Active movement is true. Move down is false. This is when it's moving up. I want it to play again if I trigger it to go back up. So there's two places where my sound gets triggered. You'll see here in my code that I create an audio source called wall move audio, and I've made it public. What this allows me to do is if I head back into Unity, I can see on my move down script, I have my wall move audio right here. 
there's a slot that enables or allows me to attach an audio uh, file to it. So I've built an audio source here of which I've attached the door close sound. Notice I have not enabled play on awake because I don't want it to play any sound until I want it to. I'm also not looping it. I want it to only play once. So here's where the one shot aspect comes into play. All the other settings I'm going to leave alone. I just want it to play once. I can close all the 3D audio settings. I just want it to play once, once it's triggered. I'll minimize this all together. It's a pretty simple setup. The trick comes in where we place it. So by putting in this public audio source and giving it a name, I'm able to attach my audio source to this script. And now this audio source called wall move audio can be played by going wall move audio dot play with these brackets beside it. This is what allows the audio to be triggered or have a one shot once it has been interacted with. Let's look at another example. Our player has the ability to play some audio. Here's my audio source of my player. Let's take a look at it. Notice play on awake is disabled. Loop is disabled because I don't want it to play right away and I don't want it to loop. And jump is attached. This audio file that allows me to hear the sound boing, boing when the player jumps. So how does that actually get played? Well, you'll see here in my player controller I have a jump sound audio that I've attached like this. And in the script, there's a lot of code that's going to be tricky for us to follow. But here's what I want you to notice is that I've created a public audio source called jump sound. That's what I connected here. And where does this jump sound appear? Let's see if we can find it right down here in my process jumping functionality. For jumping, I don't actually have a collider like I have in here to process. It's not looking for an interaction. It's waiting for a key to be pressed. So here's a different situation where I might want sound to be triggered. In this case, if the jump button is pressed and I'm on the ground, the jumping occurs, but what I'm triggering is that I want this jump sound to play. That's a bit of fancy code here that was not actually necessary. I just got to control a certain situation, but I want this jump sound to play whatever I've attached to it. So maybe some of you that made some sense to, and you feel like you might be able to create some of that logic on your own. If you can, wonderful. If you can't, here's a couple things that you can do for one shot audio. The first one is you can change the audio I've attached with your own. You can go into the audio source for jumping on the player and just replace jump with your own sound and everything will work for the jump because I've already built it. Or if on this wall you want to change the audio, you can head to its audio source and change its audio clip to your own closing sound to customize it a little bit further. Awesome. If you want to create a one shot audio for a different type of object, that's going to be a little bit trickier, but maybe in what I show you in the next tutorial, you'll find the second strategy a little bit more conducive to creating it yourself. For now, that's your introduction to what one shot audio means and how you kind of start to think about in injecting it into different components of your project. Good luck, experiment, and let me know if I can help.